This video is about factoring special cases. The first one we're going to deal with is that perfect square trinomial. Um, I want to stress again that always, 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 you want to check to see if there's a GCF first. Um, and if there is one, you have to factor it out. But the, for perfect square trinomials, uh, this might work, and I stress might because it's not always going to, um, but it might work when you have a trinomial and when that first and last term are perfect squares. Okay. Um, but what we're going to have to check for is that middle term. Um, if we go back to that square of a binomial pattern that we did when multiplying, um, the key to this is that that middle term was 2 times the first part times the second part. Um, so we're going to have to go through and check that even if we have that first and last term that are perfect squares, is that middle term really 2 times the first part times the last part? Um, and if it is, then we can use this method. Um, so you might say, you know, if this is just a trinomial, why do I need to know this? Um, because I could just use my other method that we learned. Um, but looking at the first example, uh, we have 25x squared plus 30x plus 9. There is no GCF that we can pull out of every single term. So using our other method, we would have to do a times c. So 25 times 9, uh, that's 225 you'd be stuck sitting there trying to find factors of 225 that add to 30. Um, so I will say that if your a times c is very large, um, check to see if this method works because that's usually a good indication that this is the one you're supposed to be using. Uh, so here, that 25x squared is a perfect square. I'm going to abbreviate as ps. 9 is also a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of each of those parts. So the square root of 25x squared is 5x. The square root of 9 is 3. And now I need to check is that middle term equal to 2 times the first part times the last part. So I'm going to say 2 times 5x times 3. That would be 10x. 10x times 3 is 30x, yes, this does match that. This is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and the good news is by doing this first and last part already, we pretty much have our answer. Okay, it's that pattern that was there. So it's going to be 5x plus 3. This was a positive 30x, so we know that this is a plus 3 on the inside. So it's 5x plus 3 squared. For the second one, um, this one wouldn't be bad to do, you know, normal way that we already learned, but for the sake of practicing our perfect square trinomials, let's go for it. Uh, so for our first part, 9a squared is a perfect squared. Um, I should note, because I didn't do it in the last example, that this is a perfect square because both the number and the variable are perfect squares. So together, that forms a perfect square. Um, if it was just 9a, that wouldn't be a perfect square because the variable is not squared. Similarly, if it was like 8a squared, that also wouldn't be a perfect square because now the number part isn't a perfect square. So both the number and the variable have to be perfect squares. Uh, 1 is also a perfect square. So I'm going to go through and check to see, does it match this pattern? Does it follow this pattern? So the square root of 9a squared is 3a. So we're thinking the first part of the parentheses would be 3a. The second part of the uh, parentheses, square root of 1 is 1. And now we need to check to see, is 2 times the first part times that second part equal to 6a? 2 times 3a is 6a times 1, and it is. So this is a perfect square trinomial. 3a is going to come first. 1 is going to come next. And because our middle term was negative in this case, it's going to be 3a minus 1 to the second power. Okay, and for the last one, 100x squared, perfect square. 9y squared, also perfect square. So I'm going to figure out what my parts would be, that a and that b. So 100x squared, the square root of that is 10x. Square root of 9y squared is 3y. Now I need to check to see is 2 times my first piece, which is 10x, times my last piece. Does that equal 60xy? 
2 times 10x is 20x. 20x times 3y would be 60xy. So it is a perfect square trinomial. So in parentheses, I'm going to have 10x. I'm going to have 3y. This was a positive middle term, so it is a positive inside the binomial. So 10x plus 3y squared. Okay, um, I just want to hop back to our notes up here and note that that first and last term are perfect squares, um, and they should also be uh, both positive. Um, because when you're multiplying something by itself, whether it's a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive, um, both that first and last term should be positive terms. Okay, that middle term can be either one, and what that middle term does is determine the sign on the inside of that binomial when you do your factoring. Okay, now we're going to move on. I think the next one's easier. Okay, the difference of two squares. So once again, I stress, check for a GCF first. Okay, factor it out if you need to. Uh, this is going to work when you have a binomial now. Both terms are perfect squares, and there's a subtraction sign in the middle. Um, this was that nicer one. I think you guys like this one better than the other one, where when we had that sum and difference pattern, when we had the same thing in both parentheses, but one was a plus, one was a minus, we said square the first part, square the last part, put a minus in the middle. So now we're looking to see, hey, do we have two perfect squares with a minus in the middle? And if so, we can use this difference of two squares factoring. Uh, so here, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 9, sorry, the square root of 9 is 3. We do have a minus in the middle, so this one is going to be x plus 3 and x minus 3. And we're done. Take the square root of each of those pieces, put one with a plus in the middle, put one with a minus. Uh, next one, there is no GCF, uh, 25y squared is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. There's a minus in the middle. So take the square root of each of the pieces. Square root of 25y squared is 5y. Five five y. The square root of 16 is 4. So it's going to be 5y plus 4 and 5y minus 4. It doesn't matter if you put the minus in the first one and the plus in the second one. It is the same thing. Um, I just always tend to do plus than minus. For the next one, a squared is a perfect square b squared is a perfect square. We have a minus in the middle. Take the square root of each piece. So we have a plus b times a minus b. Okay, on, I'm gonna switch to the next page. Okay, the bottom three, um, we have eight x squared minus 32. First, there is a GCF. So eight is going to go into both of those which will leave me with x squared minus 4. And now even though these weren't perfect squares, because we have factored out that 8, we are left with x squared and 4, which are both perfect squares, and a minus in the middle. So this is going to break up into x plus 2 times x minus 2. And please do not forget to bring down any GCFs you uh, pull out, so we have to put that 8 in front. Okay. 81m to the 6th minus n to the 4th. So now this one's a little trickier because we don't have that squared there anymore. Okay, But whenever we have an even exponent, okay, that means that it's going to be a perfect square because really you can divide it into two equal groups. So even numbered exponents means perfect square. So for this one, there is no GCF between the two of them. That's a perfect square. That's a perfect square minus in the middle. So it's going to be 9m to the third. Because if you think about it, we have to have the same thing for both parentheses. And if I do m to the third times m to the third, that's where that m to the sixth is going to come from. So with those exponents, when we're taking the square root, it's like we're chopping it in half. So 9m cubed plus n squared, and then 9m cubed minus n squared. And the last one, we have x squared plus 64, no GCF, 
perfect square, perfect square, but plus in the middle. This one is not a minus. Do not fall into the trap. So this one, we could say can't be factored. Um, you might also see it called prime. Okay, so either one of those is fine, but in this case, can't do anything with it. There is no GCF, it does not fall into this difference of two squares pattern. Um, so this one is that like, that's it. That's the answer. Okay. I hope this video helped. Um, but as always, please make sure you're reaching out with any questions you might have.